Writing a research proposal involves many, many steps and I've been involved in writing more than a hundred research proposals and I've evaluated several hundred. So in this video, what I'm hoping to do is to maybe give you some personal opinion on the best ways in which you could approach this, how you're going to maximize your chances of success. And at the very, very end, I'm going to give you my top three tips for how to write a research proposal. I'm James. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about absolutely everything to do with research. Please like and subscribe. Number one, identifying the problem. Now, this might seem very, very obvious and most people really understand the research problem that they're trying to address. However, you understanding it and the reader, the person who's evaluating it, understanding it, those might not be the same thing. This is the very, very first stumbling block that you might come across when you're trying to write a research proposal. What can happen is that you're so familiar with the research problem that you don't really outline the problem clearly enough for the reader. Remember, the person who's reading, evaluating this proposal is probably an expert, but might not be an expert in this particular problem. More generally, they're in the field, but maybe they don't understand really why this particular problem is important in the first place. The second problem is that the writer can quite often not really articulate the question or the problem clearly enough, not because they completely understand it, but perhaps they haven't spent enough time really working out what the real key issue would be, the thing that would persuade the reader to fund or to give the go ahead to this research program. What I would suggest is in the very beginning, get that problem clear in your head and get that problem clearly articulated so that somebody else that might not be directly involved in this particular field, that they could understand, appreciate the importance of and give the thumbs up to the problem that you're addressing. In my experience, about 90% of research proposals fall at this particular hurdle. It's where you really need to get you all of your ideas uh, correct and get them well articulated. Point number two, conduct a literature review. Now, you're probably going to say, of course I'll conduct a literature review. Of course I'm going to find out what literature is out there. But very often people miss a paper or miss a particular point. But what you really need to do is to conduct a literature review that's going to support the arguments that you're, that you're making and that is going to clearly articulate that you have not missed out on any important papers. You're going to have to write about how your particular research proposal fits into the wider scheme of things and you cannot do that unless the literature review that you carry out has been extensive, has been thorough and has been up to date. So carry out that literature review with a view to articulating in the proposal how your particular research proposal fits in that wider body, in that great big picture. The next point I want to make is about research methodology. Now, there's an entire universe of research methodology, things that you might potentially do, and you're going to make a particular set of choices, and you're going to say, I'm going to use this research methodology, and you're going to have to justify it, but also justify why you didn't use some other methodology that was potentially useful as well. You're going to have to say why, not just what you're going to do, but why you are going to do it in this particular way. When it comes to research proposals, I need to see detail. Now, you're constrained by size quite often. You don't have an infinite number of pages you can write on this proposal. So every sentence has to count. Everything that you write has got to be there for a particular reason. I need to see detail, but I need it to be concise, compact. Every word has a reason for being there. It has value, it has meaning, it has weight. And also then the reasoning behind the whole methodology, I want that to be really, really good and very solid. Again, this is a part of the proposal that can be a stumbling block if you don't clearly outline what you're going to do in detail and why you're going to do it in this particular way. If you like what you've heard so far, please like and subscribe, but stick around to the end of the video where I'm going to give you my top three tips for how to write a research proposal. One of the most difficult things to do is to write about the expected impact and the expected outcomes. You hope that something will happen, 
You hope that you're going to find what you're looking for. And you've got to write about that, not knowing for sure that, that you're going to have particular outcomes. However, it is important to state very clearly what you expect to do, what you expect will be an outcome, and what you expect will be the impact of that outcome. And impact can be broadly defined. It can be defined as impact in the academy, impact on society, impact on just this particular field. But I need to know what the end product is. And there's quite a saying that, that perhaps you should begin with the end in mind so that you set out on this journey knowing where you're hoping to go and then plotting your way there, trying to talk about the methods that will get you there, the data that will get you there, etc. So clearly outlining the impact clearly outlining where you are going with this research, that's very, very, very important. Now, your work may or may not have ethical considerations that you need to include in your research proposal. Some kinds of research do, some kinds do not. I'm speaking to those who do have ethical considerations that they must include. It really is a red flag if you have not adequately addressed these particular concerns. Whether it's biomedical research or whether it involves human subjects or, or even questionnaires that it might involve informed consent. You must have the ethical aspects of your research proposal already sorted out a long time in advance. It is absolutely necessary for you to do this. If you do not, it can be a real red flag and it can be a no-go for your research. You must do this and you must do this very, very well. So begin quite a bit in advance. You might need licenses in some cases. You might need informed consent. It may have to go through the, the ethics board of your institute or your university. So please think about this in advance. If these are needed, get it organized, get it sorted out. A research proposal that doesn't have an adequate ethics section when it needs an ad adequate ethics section that research proposal will not be funded. It just simply won't. It doesn't matter how good the methodology is. It doesn't matter how important the problem is. If there are ethical considerations and you have not considered them, it's a no-go. Get ethics sorted. Now we get to the part about budget. And there's sometimes a lot of confusion about what budget means and how you should think about it and so on. So first of all, probably in your field of research, there are some norms about budget. How many people should be employed, what are the qualification levels of those people, etc. So ask around if you're unsure. Ask what other people do with similar kinds of projects and similar kinds of, of research areas. So that's number one. What I would advise is to ask for the appropriate amount of budget. If you think that something can be needs two years of funding, but you think maybe I should just try to be inexpensive and therefore the research proposal is more likely to be funded because I'm being inexpensive, that won't work either. People understand how much work is involved in a particular piece of research and they expect the budget to match that. They want it to be no more than expected or no less than expected. You're going to have to justify your budget. You're going to have to justify the personnel. If you've got consumable items, say in biomedical research, enzymes, or if you've got a travel budget because you have to, your work is going to involve going to another country, all of those should be costed in and justified. Say why this budget meets the aims of the research. If you can do that, then it's pretty solid. Budgets are quite often not the most controversial part of a research proposal, but you must take advice on it and you must make sure that the research budget is appropriate, not too big, not too small, and it fits and is also matched to the various work pro programs or work packages in the research proposal. So when it comes to budget, just make sure that it's appropriate, it fits well, and that you've justified it all. Now we come to the part where you're actually going to write your research proposal. And what I'm going to say to you is that you do not submit your first, your second, your third, your fourth draft. You have to submit your 15th draft. You have to submit your proposal after you have taken advice on that proposal, after you've had somebody else take a look at it, because a fresh pair of eyes can really make all of the difference. In your particular field, there are many, many successful research proposals. Make sure you've had a look at some of those. In some fields, there are online repositories 
where people have very kindly deposited successful research proposals. Take a look at those, find out what makes that successful, find out what that looks like in your particular field and make sure that what you're going to submit is really in line with what the reviewers are expecting, what is normal for your particular research field and this will maximize the likelihood that your research proposal will be successful. Finally, I come to my top three tips for making a successful research proposal. My first one is about making sure that the number of objectives in your research proposal is appropriate. Some people think that you should put in a big long list of objectives, but that has the, the effect of making the proposal seem too diffuse. The reader has the potential to get lost. They're wondering what's the real focus of this research proposal if there are many, many objectives. So make sure that you don't have too many objectives, just enough for this proposal, just enough to be appropriate, but not so many that it makes the proposal look diffuse. Keep it focused, keep it to the point, make sure you bring the reader along with you on this journey and don't go off on tangents, keep it focused. When it comes to methodology, make sure you have a backup plan. Somebody is going to say, well, what if this method isn't actually the best? What if this approach isn't the best? How can I be persuaded it is the best, number one, but also, is there a backup plan? If this methodology fails, if this approach is not really the right one, if the results don't turn out to be the way you wanted them to be, do you have a backup plan? Is there another approach that you can bring in? What if you get a negative result? What are you going to do then? Make sure this is clear in your proposal. If you do this, then you massively increase the likelihood that you've given the reviewers confidence that you know what you're doing and that you've thought about this deeply. Make sure that it's clear that if we look back in five years time, that we can understand the impact that this proposal has had. Begin with that sort of idea in mind, that this proposal will do a body of work and in five years time we will know something or understand something that we don't know or understand today. Write this into your proposal. Make sure that it's clear to the reader what we will know in five years time, where we will be in five years time, how things will be different in five years time compared to how they are now. That's a really, really strong point to make and it gives confidence as well to the reader that you've really thought about this and that you understand the broad and big picture. So these are my thoughts on writing a research proposal. I hope they've been useful for you. If you've got any more comments, please leave them below in the comments section. And I wish you the very, very best of luck with your research proposal. And I really hope this has been of, of help to you. So please like and subscribe and check out my other videos. Thank you.